and welcome back to Ask Nikki P. So I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna open up the email. I almost sent the email to another folder like I always accidentally do. But I'm gonna open this up and I'm gonna read uh, today's question. So, today's question says, Hey Nikki, where do I start? Well, when I was in high school, I was in love with this boy who is a year older than me. After nine years, I live in Alabama now and he lives in Texas. I am married and I have a daughter. From what I know, he is still single. I constantly, constantly dream about him. It's ridiculous after all this time. I do still have feelings for him, but in my situation, there is really not much I can do. I love my husband, but I'm not in love like I was with that boy. How can I deal with this? Ugh. Okay, here's what I'm gonna say. Keeping in mind, I'm not a therapist, I'm not a psychologist, I'm not an anything. I didn't even finish college, so let me just say that. I think you all know that by this point, but I'm just saying that. But here's kind of my thoughts on it. I think that most people, most females on the planet, struggle with what you're struggling with right now for multiple reasons. A, I think that the farther away you get from something, it becomes easier to romanticize things. I think it's the same reason why they say time heals everything, because the farther away you get from something, the easier it is to swallow it, the easier it is to be okay with something, because you're farther away from it. Um, and I think the same thing can come with like romanticizing something like the farther away you get from it It's like oh, but it was so good, but you're not really remembering the bad or whatever I know I don't know if you were actually in a relationship with him. It didn't sound like you were it sounded like let me see that again It sounded like you just liked him. Um, oh, I was in love. Okay, so you might have been with him But that's the first thing second thing is you were in high school and it's hard and unfair and not smart to compare an adult married relationship with a child and all of the stresses and pressures that come with the relationship in marriage and children to a relationship in your childhood essentially that had very little responsibilities, very little pressures, like real pressure, real responsibility. And it, it's different, like it's a different kind of love and different kind of circumstances. And I personally think that it is, almost kind of dangerous to compare the two because it's you're just it, your current situation isn't going to win because you can fantasize things in your head and kind of mix things up and change the story in your head and it was just a completely different situation so that's the first thing i think a lot of people deal with this they compare to people in their past in fact i'm almost going to go as far to say that everyone deals with this and when you look back at your childhood and you compare it to then it's just not gonna be the same because it's not the same circumstances. So um, I don't wanna, I talk myself into circles sometimes and start repeating things. So I'm trying to avoid like just repeating the same thing over and over. Um, but that's my thought on that is I would just tell yourself like, it's okay self that you're dreaming about this person, but it's in your past and it isn't reality with what you are in now. And it was a different life back then and to focus all of your energy into your current life, into your family, into your, your husband, into like loving your husband and growing that relationship and building it deeper and stronger and into your daughter and raising her and helping her explore what she loves to do and into yourself too. I don't know what you're doing in your life right now and maybe you are super busy and feeling super fulfilled but I think that I notice sometimes I've known moms who they put such importance on other people that they forget about themselves and not in like a, um, I don't know, new agey, like put you first girlfriend, but like it's really important to take care of yourself because if you don't, the natural side effect I think is to long for other things and to feel tired and to feel abused and to feel used. So it's not selfish or weak to take care of yourself. It's mature and responsible to take care of yourself. And what I mean by taking care of yourself is just like it sounds. A, making sure that you feel beautiful, taking care of your hair and your nails and your makeup and staying active, not only for your appearance, but also because of your health so that you can be a better mom and a better wife and a better lover and more active. And, you know, to take care of your passions. Are you doing anything in your life that you feel really passionate and excited about? Like charity wise, or are you running something at your church or groups for mommies or crafts or a side job or something that is making you feel 
Like you're expressing yourself so that you're not just a mom, you're not just a wife, you're not just something, you're a person, a complete person. Um, and really focusing on the life that you have. I think that that is important. So, I don't know. He's, did you just give a thumbs up? Uh -huh. Oh man, yeah. So, yeah, that's kind of my thought. And it's all easier said than done. Like, I come on here and I give like speeches and advice and really, I mean, you can just look at me and pretty much fully realize I'm like a hot mess um, because I'm just speaking to myself. Like, that's the only reason I can say all these things. These are things that I have to remind myself on the daily is to try to strive, because it does take effort, to be a well-rounded person, to be a good wife, to be a good daughter, to be a good friend, to take care of myself, to stay active and in shape and healthy and take my vitamins and eat well. And it takes effort. Life takes effort. And sometimes that's annoying and you just want to roll over and be like, why does life take effort? I just want to give up or just daydream about things in the past. But that doesn't get you anywhere. And it's kind of like, you know, um, what's that where it's like you can either this is not the saying at all, but you'll you'll know what I'm talking about. Where you're like, you either complain about the game or you can join the game. It's kind of like that. It's like, well, that's how it is. That's life. Life just takes effort, um, and it takes choices. Choices to not live in the past. Choices to live here. So, yeah, that's it. That was a fairly long rant, I think. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna open up the Twitter question. Let's see what it says. It says, "How long have you been doing YouTube?" So I. I have been doing YouTube, it'll be four years next month. So I'm not sure the exact date, I have to go back and find my first video, but I technically opened the account in July of 2010, but I didn't start uploading till December of 2010. So it took me a few months because I had uploaded and then I literally would take it down five minutes later and I tried to forget about it and I couldn't forget about it and it kept nagging at me. And so in December was when I finally just like did it full force. So um, December will be four years, peeps crazy times. So that's it. Uh, you can send me questions and messages to my email address, which will be linked down below, or you can send me questions on the hashtag on Twitter, ask Nikki P, and I will see you all very soon. All right. Bye guys.